everyone today i'm going to show you how to make nastar or pineapple tart uh, nastar is one of the indonesian holiday cookie trio the others are um castangles and a uh, katetong or uh, katong or kuelida kucing i have shown you how to make uh, the other two in my other videos so like i have mentioned in uh, one of my videos that indonesia was a dutch colony for 350 years so we kind of influence each other cuisines originally uh, these uh, three cookies nastar castangles and katetong originally were dutch cookies but uh, we have made these uh, cookies for a very very long time so we serve these cookies um, all the time especially during holidays so out of those three cookies nastar is the uh, most difficult one to make a uh, very time consuming i'm going to show you what nastar looks like before i start making it so this this is nastar I have made this uh, right before Christmas. So to make nastars, it takes uh, many steps. First, we are going to make the pineapple jam and then we're going to make the cookies itself and then um, the other steps. So uh, we're gonna go through all the steps. Um, if you start in the morning, you may be able to make nastar uh, in one day, but I uh, this is already midday, so I'm not gonna finish making nastar today. So today I'm going to show you how to make the uh, pineapple jam. In Indonesia, people uh, make pineapple jam using real pineapple. They grate it, but of course we have made in Indonesia to do that, right? Here, either you can grate it yourself if you want to, um, but I will just use this uh, crushed pineapple. Um, it's going to be easier for me and faster too. Um, all right, so let's start. All right, so we're gonna cook this uh, pineapple, uh, crushed pineapple. I'm going to use three cans. So I am using a wok, but of course uh, you can cook it in a, in a Dutch oven or in a pot. Okay. You see that my uh, pineapple uh, starting to boil. So if you want to uh, put your pine pineapple in a blender, just make sure you do not wanna make it too mushy, okay? You wanna feel the texture of the uh, pineapple that's why in Indonesia instead of putting in the blender we uh, grate the pineapple but here people would just put it in the blender for me rather than put the blender I'll just use the pineapple uh, the crushed pineapple all right now it is boiling I'm gonna add cinnamon sticks I'm using uh, three because I uh, I'm using three uh, cans of crushed pineapples and then uh, cloves. Okay, I'm putting just six. Okay, now uh, that the juice is mostly gone here, right? I'm gonna add the sugar. So I'm gonna start with a half cup. We want to caramelize the sugar, okay? And uh, anyway, if you want to reduce the uh, cooking process, you can actually strain the pineapple uh, juice. I mean, you're not using the pineapple juice when you cook it. So, um, to strain the juice, to reduce the amount of cooking. So now I'm cooking it in the medium heat. So we want to cook it, cook it down until uh, it is thickened and uh, the color has changed to darker color. What's going to make the uh, color change is the sugar. So 
I am using a wok to cook the pineapple is because wok has a bigger base so it's a faster to cook rather than using a pot but some people uh, use crock pot to or, or slow cooker to make the pineapple jam okay it's gonna take a long time but then you do not have to stir it all the time like what I'm doing now okay so it's all up to you okay so it is getting uh, drier and then it's uh, 30 minutes already I'm gonna taste it to see if it needs sugar extra sugar Hmm. This is actually sweet enough for me. I still taste a little bit uh, uh, the, the tartness. I can smell the cinnamon. It smells good. So when your pineapple jam is almost done, uh, or when it's done, you may remove the cloves and the uh, cinnamon sticks, okay? You do not want to eat your nastar and find uh, cloves in your nastar, right? That's why uh, you want to count how many cloves you put so you, you know how many you have to remove. Alright, so now I have cooked uh, this pineapple jam for uh, 45 minutes. Okay, I have removed the cinnamon sticks and the cloves. All of them. Look at my pineapple jam, it is drier than before, and then the color is also darker than before, the sugar has caramelized, alright, again, the amount of sugar is depend on how uh, tart or how sweet your pineapple is, and then also depend on your own taste okay if you like a sweet pineapple jam or you want to taste a little bit tartness from the pineapple okay so i am now done uh, cooking my pineapple jam okay done this is the consistency that you are looking for okay very thick and dry now i'm going to cool it off completely all right all right now we are going to make the nastar i'm going to prepare the dry ingredients first for the dry ingredients i'm going to sift together two cups of um, all-purpose flour tablespoon of uh, milk powder or uh, dry milk okay we call it dry milk here one tablespoon of cornstarch okay and I'm going to sift them all together So the dry milk here is um, more granulated than the one in Indonesia. Just mix. All right. Now let's cream the butter. I'm going to use two sticks of butter. One stick of butter here in the United States has eight tablespoon or half cup. I'm going to use two sticks, so it means it's 16 uh, tablespoons or one cup, okay? So in Indonesia, we normally uh, use a Wisman, which is a, a Dutch brand of butter because this nastar, nastar is originally a Dutch cookies, right? So we use Wisman mixed with Blue Band, which is an Indonesian brand of margarine. So here, it's not easy to find Wisman or a Blue Band so i would normally use a butter just a pure butter here but i use a good brand of butter it's not just a generic brand so i use a carry gold which is um, an irish brand of uh, butter and i'm going to use 
one stick or uh, eight tablespoon of the salted butter and eight tablespoon of unsalted butter okay and my butter is at room temperature already to make it easy to cream okay so to make uh, this nasta you may use mixer stand mixer or hand mixer or you don't need to use mixer at all you can just use uh, you can just use hand whisk okay if you do not have mixer don't worry you still can uh, make nastar i normally use a uh, stand mixer but today i'm gonna just use uh, my hand mixer so first i'm going to cream the butter and a uh, half cup of sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla extract you just wanna uh, mix it or cream it uh, with uh, for a short time like one minute probably only until the butter and the sugar blend together okay So that's all you need to do only blend the uh, sugar and the butter and now we're going to add in the egg yolk to make nastar we do not need the egg white we need the egg yolk the egg white you use it to make uh, katetong okay and then I'm going to mix it again with low speed only until combined okay so you do not want to mix this too long okay all right so if you do not want to use the mixer you can just use your hand whisk and your spatula okay and then the last thing to do is to mix in the dry ingredient okay mix it gradually you don't have to mix it all to make it easy to mix okay i'm gonna just use my just use my hand mixer to mix You use your hand mixer, then uh, use the lowest speed, okay? Okay, that's it. The rest, you can use your spatula. And I'm gonna make sure that all my... Uh, dough here are combined i'm gonna mix with my hand for very short time okay anyway when you roll the dough you're gonna have to use your hand okay just make sure that you wash your hands beforehand So the dough at the beginning, it feels a little sticky, which is normal. Don't worry about it. Okay, as long as you can uh, roll it to a ball, then it's, uh, it's fine. You do not want your dough to be too dry either, right? Because then your nastar is going to crack when you bake it. Okay, so I'm going to check if... I can roll it to a ball you see all right no problem easy all right so the next step is to make the balls out of this dough okay um, don't do not turn on the oven yet because uh, it's gonna take a long time before we can actually bake uh, the nastar okay 
so the size of the bowls you want to make is actually uh, it's up to you some people like making bigger nastar because it's easier you know it's faster uh, some others like making a very small nastar I, I like to make not too small not too big just a bite size of nastar uh, so I uh, normally use one teaspoon not exactly one teaspoon just approximate using a teaspoon to help me uh, making the same size so just roll it like this okay so it's gonna look like this all right it doesn't have to be uh, so round so neat because you know what we're gonna flatten it again to fill it with the pineapple jam all right so we want to know how many bowls you make in order to know how many uh, bowls of pineapple jam you want to uh, make, okay? So I'm going to put it uh, on my baking pan. So it's just approximate one teaspoon. Okay, like this. If it's a little bit too big, it's okay. A little bit too small, it's fine. You just have to adjust the size of the uh, pineapple jam later. Okay. When you bake the nastar, you do not need to space it too, too much, okay? They don't really expand. If they expand, they, they expand a very a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. So I'm gonna leave space like uh, one centimeter. Uh, let's see if I can make one more. So I think I'm gonna make 70. Okay, so 70 nastars out of one recipe that I have. Now we are going to make the balls uh, out of the pineapple jams, okay? The same amount, 70 balls. So this is my pineapple jam that I made yesterday. So the size of the balls have to be smaller than uh, this one, right? Because we want to put it into this uh, dough. Okay, so I normally use a half teaspoon. You wanna uh, roll it from a cold pineapple jam. You can put it in the freezer, a freezer too, uh, instead of the refrigerator, because it is easier to uh, roll it from a cold uh, jam than the room temperature. Okay, so I'm gonna see. Now we are wanna flat flatten this uh, the dough and then put it. Put the pineapple and then you wanna cover, close it, make it a ball again. Okay, then you wanna roll it. Okay, you see? All right, so the final result is a little bit bigger than the balls that we made earlier. All right? I'm going to make The rest of the balls okay All right, so I have rolled uh, the pineapple jam too. So this is what's left. So I used like approximately half of the uh, pineapple jam that I made yesterday. So basically, if you make it a little bit smaller, the, the pineapple jam balls, then you uh, probably can make two recipes out of the three cans of the pineapple jam that I made, okay, yesterday. But of course, if uh, you may also use it uh, to eat with your toast, okay? 
so you can just put it in the refrigerator for a week or if you want to keep it for to make uh, to make nastar next time who knows when then you would wanna freeze it uh, okay and when you freeze it it lasts forever by the way okay all right so now we are going to uh, fill the pineapple jam into the dough all right so i made one already okay flatten the uh, the door and then add the pineapple balls and then you wanna cover the ball with the door so if you like less pineapple uh, filling in your nasta then you can make smaller than half teaspoon or if you're not sure you can actually cover the whole pineapple balls uh, with the dough that you make then you probably want to make smaller pineapple balls or make bigger dough balls okay so it's uh, you just have to experiment yourself uh, what's easier for you all right some people like lots of uh, pineapple filling in their nastar some other likes it less okay just keep doing it until you're done filling the dough with the pineapple jam. And by the way, I am preheating my oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Okay, because once we're done filling all these balls with the pineapple, then I will want to bake it. So I'm going to show you again. So flatten the, uh, the dough ball. That's thin enough, but not ripped. And then fill it with the pineapple ball and then you wanna cover the balls with the dough and then you want to roll it again like this okay all right so i am done uh, making this nastar i filled all the dough with the pineapple uh, jams so now i am going to bake this uh, in the oven uh, for 30 minutes at 300 degree fahrenheit and you wanna bake it in the center rack all right now uh, while waiting for my nastar in the oven we are going to prepare the egg wash okay to brush on top of the nastar when it's uh, done 30 minutes uh, for the egg wash we're gonna need three uh, yolk and mix with one tablespoon of oil i'm using canola oil you may use vegetable oil and one tablespoon of sweetened condensed milk okay you may use honey if you do not uh, want to use sweetened condensed milk uh, and also if you like your nastar to look more uh, yellow on top that some people add um, a food coloring yellow food coloring but I do not like uh, food coloring in my nastar at all. We're gonna just mix them together. Just get it ready for later, okay? So when uh, my nastar is done after 30 minutes, then uh, this egg yolk is already at room temperature. Okay, so after 30 minutes, look at my nastar. The skin is dry, okay, and if you lift, the bottom is also kind of golden brown, but it's not too brown, all right? So we want to leave it uh, cool uh, down a little bit before we brush with the, uh, with the egg wash here, okay? Just let it cool down first. All right, so it is 15 minutes already, and then my nastar uh, is kind of cool. Uh, down already not completely cool off but uh, it is uh, you can handle it you can hold it with no problem okay so now we are going to uh, brush it with the egg wash so there is two way to brush it okay I 
can just dip it into the egg wash like this all right look at this you brush it again on the side all right and put it back to the original place so i dip it and then brush the side Put it back. Okay, this is the technique that I use. The other technique is to just brush it using the uh, your brush on top of the nastar, just like this. All right, one by one. So it's up to you, however you wanna do it, okay? I personally, I like to just dip it into the egg wash and then brush the side a little bit and then put it back. Okay, so I am done uh, brushing all the nastars here. Okay, take a look. Now I'm going to bake it again, put it back in the oven uh, for another 10 to 15 minutes just to cook the top, all right? Still at 300 degrees Fahrenheit on the middle rack. Okay, so this is what it looks like after I bake, uh, baked it again for 15 minutes. Um, it is totally cook it's dry you can touch it okay and then the bottom is also the color is perfect all right but if you want the color to be a little bit darker then uh, you have to change the uh, your oven setting you're gonna change the setting to uh, to broil it means you're using the upper heat okay so you're not using the heat from the bottom but you're using the heat from the the top in your oven okay now we're gonna bake it again using a broil setting but when you're using the broil setting then you want to watch it very closely because it's gonna burn very very fast okay i'm still gonna put this uh pan on the uh, middle rack all right so i baked it again uh, for two minutes it's almost three minutes, but it's less than three minutes. So I would say two minutes uh, using the upper heat in the oven. So uh, using a broil setting, okay? So I am done. So look at this. The top is uh, a little bit uh, darker color, okay? This is the result that I want to see. So baking it again using the broil setting for uh, two or three minutes just to make the, uh, the top... Uh, color is darker is totally optional okay you don't have to do it if you don't want to all right so this is the uh, nastar the, fi the final result of the nastar all right so after it cools down then we're gonna uh, try all right so it's time to try my nastar i have my tea ready with me uh so let's uh try one so this is my nastar um, it is bite size you can just uh, eat it all in one bite but then I'm going to uh, bite it so you can see so I can show you the inside it is so good look at the inside you see a lot of pineapple jam a lot of filling because I wasn't stingy uh, putting the filling um, so the crust, the skin, it's like melt in your mouth. It doesn't, it's not, it's not hard like you were, like you overbaked it. And it's not, it doesn't uh, taste like you underbaked it either. So I baked it uh, perfectly uh, and I can taste 
uh, the the good butter. Okay, that's the reason why you want to use good butter to make nastar. You don't have to use the Dutch brand just because this is originally Dutch cookies. So if you cannot find the Dutch brand, so what? It doesn't mean that you cannot make good nastar, right? Just find good butter and then make it. You still can make a very delicious nastar using any butter as long as it is the good butter, all right? And then the filling itself, the filling is also good. It is sweet, but it's not too, too sweet. I still can taste the tartness of the pineapple. And then I can taste the uh, the pineapple bits because I was using um, crushed pineapple, right? To make the pineapple jam. That's why I still taste the, the texture. It's so, so yummy. And I can taste the cinnamon too. And the pineapple uh, filling all right so this is my family a uh, favorite nastar everything that i actually make i cook or bake you know and put it on youtube i do it uh, for my family for my children uh, so i always use my favorite recipe so that one day in the future they can make it themselves and remember uh, all this food that they enjoyed when they were when they were young so I, uh, I hope uh, you enjoy uh, watching this uh, video and then you probably you want to make it yourself. It's not too difficult, it's just time consuming. But again, you know, that's the reason why uh, Nastar is not cheap. It is a little expensive because it takes a lot of time. It's time consuming to make Nastar. So you can make it yourself if you want to and see if you like it. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.